Today's brief LEGO history lesson is on AquaZone. So get your notes ready. There's a pop quiz at the end. Not really. This one hits close to my heart, as it was one of the lines that first introduced me into the world of LEGO. This set in particular, because I clearly remember playing with this little guy all the time. I know, I know, you're not here for the nostalgia trip. So let's get started. Starting up in 1995, AquaZone focused on undersea adventures between two contending factions. The Aquanauts, aka the good guys, and the Aqua Sharks, the bad guys. These feuding factions are continually scoring the depths of the ocean for crystals. So what's so special about these crystals causing all this turmoil? <laughs> no one knows. Unfortunately, this was an overly used plot device used among many of the LEGO themes during this era. Yeah, the LEGO group wasn't the best on creative storytelling just yet. The Aquanauts used some pretty standard run-of-the-mill machinery on their search for the not-so-unique crystals. All of them sharing a yellow tone with some blue transparent pieces. It even included a domed base, which was pretty cool, but not unusual. As this theme was almost a carbon copy to its cousins in the space line. You can see quite the resemblance between the themes. It's almost so close this line could have potentially been just another sub-theme to space. Most of the sets included a vehicle with some kind of grabbing mechanism. You know, for the crystals. Like the Crystal Explorer sub and the Crystal Crawler. The Aqua Sharks, though, had a much more interesting, unique, and fun design to their equipment. Bet you'd never guess what they were designed after. Go on. Oh wait, was your guess sharks? Because it was sharks. Yep, the bad guys got the cool sets that were all designed to look like sharks and were colored with black and translucent orange pieces. To really give you that bad guy vibe. Unfortunately for these baddies, though, they didn't get a big operational base. Instead, they got a cave. A cave? That's a little anticlimactic. Then in 1997, another crew came in, the Aqua Raiders. No, not the Aqua Raiders, the all one word Aqua Raiders. These guys didn't really have much correlation with the other two already involved. They were more like pirates that just drove around their own black and translucent green branded vehicles and just, I don't know, raided and stuff. This sub theme didn't go very far, as the Lego group only released three sets and we didn't hear of them again. Well, for the most part. Moving into 1998, two new groups were introduced, replacing the original two, the Hydronauts and the Stingrays, following the same framework as the old counterparts. Hydronauts good, Stingrays bad. The difference with these sets were they were on a much larger scale, different color schemes, and just a little bit more badass. Hydronauts were more interesting than the Aquanauts, with a little more rough around the edges look. Darker theme with some translucent green, including a little more gray and black. But for the most part, same, same, but different. Then there's the Stingrays. Oh my lanta, these guys were cool. Being some of the darkest Lego sets that I can ever remember, they were just the best. That could just be my nostalgia kicking in. These were large scale machines based on a, you guessed it, Stingray. With great colors of gray and translucent yellow, and the minifigs were just amazingly hardcore with their red eyes and old school diving suits that resemble medieval helmets. The badassery of this sub theme knew no bounds. These guys weren't just about stealing the crystals. They just wanted to destroy everything. Guess the red eyes kind of make more sense with this group. The AquaZone theme saw its demise by the end of 1998. Even though it had generally positive reviews, its retirement was likely due to the LEGO Town Divers sub-theme, which was a little more relatable and happy for LEGO's target audiences. The AquaZone legacy did live on through other themes like Alpha Team Deep Sea, Aqua Raiders, guess that one, and the far more popular Atlantis theme, which was most relatable to AquaZone but with a better plot, more distinguishable sets, and unique characters. While the AquaZone theme wasn't exactly groundbreaking with its storyline, the designs and playability left a mark on fans everywhere. Fans still yearning for the fun and dynamic ways sets like this could be played with, and turned into something of their own. It was the last of a dying breed, for LEGO's big change-up in the early 2000s. With the LEGO group's recent nostalgic releases like the Viking Village, Eldorado Fortress, and the Lion Knight's Castle, maybe we could see a similar comeback for a theme like this. And that's your brief history on LEGO AquaZone. If you could hit the buttons and the doodads there, that would be greatly appreciated. And until next time, be good, be kind, be well.